What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. I hope everybody's having a great day. All right, guys, we're going way back to Spirit Rover to Saul 1854. But before we go on, I want to ask you guys a question. Do you think Mars was probably warmer or colder when it had an atmosphere? I thought about this question. I said, well, I would think it at least regulate the temperature swings, right? Because with no atmosphere, it heats up, you know, pretty decent, but it cools off almost immediately the second the sun goes down. So we get these huge temperature swings from like anywhere, the average of 50 to 70 degrees in the summertime in the equatorial region to like 100 degrees below zero in that same, you know, season and at night. But then I thought about it. Wait a minute. So if there was less sunlight, because you, you now have a filter uh, with the atmosphere, so would it have been warmer? Probably not. So I decided to Google it, and I found some conflicting information. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's go to this page here. And if you go to the top, you can see it right here, space.com, basically affiliated with NASA and all that. And we're going to drop down to right here. And you can read right here, an evolving world. In the past, Mars may have been warmer and wetter, with an average global temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius, right? We've learned that Mars is a dynamic planet. Michael Mayer, lead scientist for NASA's Mars Exploration Program, told reporters in 2011. We've learned that it has a history where it was warm and wet at the same time that life started here on Earth, which is pretty interesting. Now, other research suggests that the red planet may have once been icy, an icy wasteland with an average temperature of minus 54 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 48 degrees Celsius. According to Robin Wordsworth, a research at Harvard, a colder scenario is more straightforward to model because Mars only gets 43% of the solar energy of Earth, and early Mars was lit by a younger sun believed to have been 25% dimmer than it is today. So we got this conflicting thing. But if it's true, if the latter is the true, then it would make sense to me that they would make their st structures underground. Or did they make it both? This is the reason why I decided to bring this uh, Saul back up, right? Because we've been talking about how they build into the ground or into buttes, mountains, whatever it may be. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the one we're going to look at right here. We can make this a little bigger for you guys. Dust Devil in Spirit View Ahead on Saul 1854. Now, NASA's Mars Exploration Rover Spirit used its navigation camera to take images that have been combined into this 180 degree view of the rover's surroundings during the 18th, 154th Martian day or Sol, of Spirit's surface mission, uh, March 21st, 2009. The rover had driven 13.79 meters, or 45 feet, westward earlier on Sol 1854. Now, they say it right here, west is in the center, which is like right there, obviously in the middle of the pan, where a dust devil is visible in the distance. You can see it right there at the top, just a little bit of white right there, right? Um, uh, north on the right, where Husband Hill dominates the horizon. Now, keep in mind, guys, Husband Hill is where the actual rover pretty much died, right? Got stuck in the sand and everything else. And that's right there in the right-hand side of the pan. And you can see right there, it dominates the horizon. Spirit was on top of Husband Hill in September and October of 2005. South is on the right, where lighter toned rock lines uh, the edge of the lower plateau called Home Plate. Okay. And, of course, you can download right the TIFF, which is only 4 megabytes pretty quick you can download it um so yeah uh here's the photo right here we can just look at it now what i like about this thing is it's pretty decent i mean it doesn't look as sloppy and it's covered up as we see in the curiosity photos right all right let's jump into photoshop i'm going to show you the things we're going to look at right off the bat and then i'm just going to enhance them for you again here we have these spots right here these two areas they look like just nothing more than just darker squares, right? Or maybe a shadow. Well, you'll see in a minute, it's not just that. Over here, we got these two items. Now, this right here it looks like a, some kind of stone trap door, and it may be easy to camouflage because once it's closed, it just look like a rock laying on the ground, right? You got this stuff right here in the middle of this circle. Let me just zoom into that. Right there. And go back to this right here. Okay. And there's a couple other oddities that are laying on the ground. Looks like these stone blocks of some sort. We've got these three objects here, or details, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and put them, all three of them in there. We've got this item here. Almost looks triangular in shape right there in the middle, 
right? In the middle of this circle, we've got what looks like an oval piece with a, a docker oval in the middle of it. A circle with a raised circle or detail in the middle of that. The biggest thing in this is just mind-boggling to me, and I've said this in my last video when I first done this, was this object right here. Now, to me, this looks like some kind of weird spacecraft, and the reason why I say that is because the ends, both the left and the right, seem symmetrical, and it's on the ground. But look at the details, and you'll see them much better all over the top of this thing. And you've got what looks like this white object coming from it itself. Now, is it part of this uh, structure that's laying on the ground? Is it some kind of spacecraft? What is this thing? And of course, you guys be the judge when we're done looking at all this. All right. I'm going to outline these things. We're going to enhance it a little bit. And again, we've got these objects right here. And you can see it right here. It's a little bit darker. Notice how these openings right there, and on the side of this one here, the one on the right, has what looks like a white frame or something to it. And then we've got this other object right here, that looks kind of round at the base of it, and then it's sticking up and has what looks like these openings to it. I find that pr pretty bizarre. And they are, in fact, in the photo, guys. They're there. There's no doubt that they're, th that they're there. See that? All right. Now, let's go to this trap door thing, because this is cool. Bring it down. Okay. Let's go ahead and outline this to give you guys an idea of what I'm actually looking at. Okay, that's enhanced. Now you can see that, and I'm going to go back, I'm going to jockey back and forth to the original, to this, and you can see what looks like this piece sticking out here at the bottom, and it would fit perfectly into this square in the ground. And it makes perfect sense. If you were to drop that, all you see is just a round, kind of like a, probably a mushroom-shaped kind of rock laying on the surface. You wouldn't think nothing of it. Now you see that, how thick this this rock is, it, and how that thing would go into the ground. It makes sense. It looks like there's a square right here at the base, like I said, right here. And this piece here would actually fit right into it once you went and closed it down. And it makes perfect sense to me. Okay, let's move over to this. This thing, I have a feeling this has been really messed around with because... It literally has, looks like on this one here, I'm going to put this right in the middle of the screen because you may not be able to see the cursor because it literally is so small. But let me go ahead and enhance that because this is pretty funky. I don't even know what to make of this. But enhanced with the filters, I'm just going to back out a little bit. It almost has these symmetrical things standing out, but I think these may be manipulation because when you look at it, you can see this area right here where it comes up and goes back down. And this dock area is actually going over that. But you can, in fact, see the detail. It's there. Okay. Pretty funky. These two items here. Again, I'm going to go ahead and circle them. And then you can have a better look. Once it's enhanced. Okay. Jump over to this side. This is what I said. It looks like this weird little circle with a raised circle in the middle, right? You can see that just a little bit, but it's there. See it? Just going to point it out. Of course, it's kind of grainy because I did what I could to, to sharpen it up for you guys. Yep. Yeah, to me, that's not normal. I'm going to back it a little bit. And you, of course, you guys know you can pause this any way you like. Okay, this thing here, I, I don't even know what to make of it. And I know you guys probably looked at that thing before I even enhanced it and said, what the hell is that? Again, this thing, look at this. Look at the details on top of it. Not so much the ends to it, like we got here, like I said. And on this end, where it looks symmetrical. What do you guys think of that? Then when you look at the top pieces on top of this, it has what looks like these weird things protruding out of it. Next to this arrow pointing to the left on the right-hand side, you can see what looks like objects sticking out of it. Like 
it's some kind of machine. It's some kind of something other. But you can see that thing. It looks like it's symmetrical on each end. And yet it has all of these things all over the top. What could that possibly be? Guys, even without enhancing this thing. Here you go. Here's the original photo. Right there. Come on, guys. Look at that. What? Right off the bat, you have to question this thing because you have to ask yourself, why does it look almost completely symmetrical on each end? We don't know if this right-hand side is even halfway in the ground. We're just assuming that it's completely off the ground or just sitting on the ground. And clearly, it may not be. What is that? That, to me, just blows my mind. Now, you can see where I outlined it. And, of course, I didn't do all the details on it, but there you go, right? What is this thing? To me, that looks like some kind of weird structure or some kind of craft machine. What is it? Anyway, guys, you guys be the judge. Again, if they had an atmosphere, okay, to me, it would be more regulated temperatures. In other words, it wouldn't get as cold at night, probably wouldn't get as hot during the day. So it would be more regulated as far as that goes. But they would get less heat, meaning it wouldn't get as warm during the day. So is it possible they lived more underground and inside buttes, burrow into mountains, hills, just like our ancient people did here on Earth? And we get the Pueblo Indians that were carved and their structures in mountainsides and everything else, caves, everything like that. You know why? Because it was warmer in the wintertime, colder in the summertime. It was more to regulate the temperature inside a structure, and it would make perfect sense to me. Now, maybe they had high-tech machinery, but they still lived inside structures. We don't know if these structures underground were, like, absolutely high-tech. Even NASA doesn't know if it was, you know, a cold planet or a warm planet back then. And they're even saying now, since I think 2011, that Mars has been coming out of an ice age. So, which one is it? Was it really hot back then? Was it really cold? There's no way of knowing. They're researching it, but you can see that they have two conflicting things. Anyway, guys, drop your comments and thoughts below. Let me know what you think. Please like and share. Always appreciated, guys. You know that. Got another Mars one coming up, and I got another Moon one coming up, so stay tuned for that as well. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Always appreciated, and I'll see you in the next one.